YouTube, gameplay, gameplay, gameplay. And this one is Mutt Seasons. And I tell you, like I told you in the last video, if you guys haven't watched all my gameplays, make sure you check them out. Mutt Seasons is sweaty. I swear I played three or four or five games live every night on Twitch. That link is below if you're not checking it out. If you're not following the social medias for all the updates on the merch, all the updates on the videos, all the updates on the streams, everything that I got going on this summer, man, make sure you follow those social medias. Also, but every night, man, these seasons are sweaty. Um, these kids have played tons and thousands of games of Madden. And uh, this game, I, I like this game. It was a, it was a fun game. Um, the reason I'm putting made this video is this kid ran a super unique offense. Like a lot of everything he did was different than everybody else. And I know that's kind of hard to find nowadays in Madden. Excuse me, especially this late in the year. You know, when ever, the meta's pretty much been ran up and down over and over for months. But, I mean, this guy really has something different. And this is an example of kind of learning your opponent as the game goes on. Kind of learning his plays. Because everybody, we all have our, our go-to plays in certain situations and our schemes and what we like to do. Uh, this guy gave me a lot of trouble early. And I'll show you in the gameplay. Um, but one thing that I, I'll tell you to this day that I have a strength for in Madden. Uh, it's not stick work or passing or, or defense. And just... You know, memory, uh, recognizing people's tendencies and picking up on them very, very quickly. Um, uh, and one thing about that's the skill gap in Madden, you know, and, and there's a skill gap in hiding your tendencies or not being as predictable and having a plethora of plays that look the same and so on and so forth. And in this game, this guy, I don't want to say he definitely didn't get repetitive, probably one of the least repetitive players I've played. But I, uh, you know, wound up catching on, and we'll talk about it in this gameplay, man. So, like I said, if you like these, if you're really into this content right now that I've been pushing out, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe because we're gonna keep going. But let's get into this gameplay. The first play of this game sucks, man. It, it's probably the worst way you would start a game as I get the in route tipped and picked off. Now, I had Moss on that play, wanted to use it as a decoy and uh, go up top or just hit that in route for 15 yards. Does not. We stopped the run on the first play, and the second play, this play right here, is one that he goes to throughout the game. And that's what I mean about learning your opponent. Uh, he's going to put everybody in the flat route over here. I blitz too many. Don't have enough people to cover Walter Payton out of the backfield. So just remember that play because he's going to go back to that type of thing throughout the game. And I definitely wasn't ready for that play, and it got him a free touchdown along with that pick. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I don't think that had anything to do with Michael Vick being short. Sometimes defenders just jump up and swat the ball. Uh, but... Got to deal with it. You know, that's why they watch, man. You can't give up after one fluky play and one fluky turnover, man, because, I mean, you can't do that in real life, man. People fight through these things all the time as we hit the little rollout right here. This guy was unique. His name is The Pebble. I don't know if you guys played The Pebble, but he was unique. Uh, his offense, his defense, um, he mixed in a lot of uh, just, I want to say big nickel, but he didn't run it like anybody else. He kind of spread his linebackers. And I will tell you, this guy was not good at defending the read option or the blast at all. Um, like I said, this is one where if it was on all Madden and he didn't have, you know, 99 players or salary cap or something, blast is something I could have ran every play. But because Vic is going to fumble, you have to do it in moderation. Only when he's healthy, mix in some good runs here and there. Once again, you see the running back in the flat. He likes to put his running backs out. He has Randall Cunningham at quarterback. His audibles uh, made me a little nuts. Right there, he went from five wide. So I came out one four six. He audible down to a little run. Just tried to mix it up as best as he could. Once again, I put, he puts the running back out in the flat. I actually put his own over there to stop it. And we get Keith Bullock to get the sack. So there it is. That's one of the first adjustments I made. Let me go ahead and just put Taylor Mays in a purple zone. So if he does throw in the flats, he's going to catch it. But I have my enforcer there for a big hit. And that's pretty much how I went. Uh, and the, the adjustments went on as they go, but this guy really audibled around a lot. Made it difficult for me to be comfortable on defense. Um, wasn't your typical, you know, just try to throw corner route type of player. Really mixed in a lot of different reads, a lot of different looks. And probably, I want to say, close to 10 different formations as we go for a fourth and two here. Sometimes on fourth and two, man, your opponent really likes to play short. Uh, try to stop the first down. So that's when you go up and hit a big play. I hit that crossing route right there. Get inside the 20. We're going to mix in a couple runs here. And here goes Michael Vick. Excuse me, Miss Baja. 
touchdown just like that i'm telling you this guy was really bad i i, I want to say he was really passive at defending the blast he didn't try to blitz he didn't try to load the box or anything and that's uh, honestly if you guys face it it's probably and once again we see him here with his audibles from uh under center i want to stop the run he goes to five wide uh so i'm in run personnel to guard his five wide and all of a sudden bang now he's just going just two streaks and two slants and we'll remember that Remember that play? He popped him with it the first time he brought it out. When he goes to that two tight end set, he likes two, one streak and two slants. But like I said, the blast, if you play it passive, eventually you're going to get some turnovers. You're going to get some fumbles. And right here, he literally just, I guess he just saw me guarding that guy and just just guessed that I would take a false step. Took a one bad step. Uh, he actually do that before I took the bad step. So he was just praying that I that I was greedy, and I was. You know, I, nobody wants to run after a streak right there, right? Uh, so he did catch me right there, caught me lacking. Touchdown over the top to Gail Sayers. Like I said, his audibles are a little goofy. Uh, might have to come out in a base defense like big nickel or three three five or you know nickel normal something like that. And right there, that's the first time in the game he user rushed me. User rushed me off the edge, got a block shed. I fired a hitch and it was covered. Once again, we see him throwing the ball over there to Walter Payton. Now, when you're in these situations, man, it's so hard to tackle a Walter Payton or anything like that. So for me, it's pretty much just don't let him score. As long as he doesn't score a touchdown, you did your job. You know, if he's in the open field. So don't worry about trying to stop him for yards as I call a timeout to try to get the ball back. Right there again, he goes running back flat. We cover it really good, but he hits this crossing route over here in front of Pat Pete. Doesn't get the first down. He kicks a field goal, so I'm okay with that. It is 17 to 14, and because of that first play, I actually have to kick the ball off to him. So that's going to be rough. Uh, double dip in the chip, he could, but now we see Walter Payton with a big gain on the read option. Uh, like I said, his run defense, I'm not going to say it was, it was bad, but I, I liked what I saw. Um, as we look for the corner out there, we're going to playmaker up our drag to get an extra blocker for Vic. Kind of a lead blocking delay quarterback run, essentially. Um, and once again, this guy doesn't put a spy. If you're not going to put a spy, Michael Vick is going to terrorize you. Right there, I come down here and I'm going to spike. A lot of people don't spike like that. They would no huddle or call a play. But I like to spike because I can get my hot routes done. I go for this corner route in the end zone. But he's fast enough with Dion to go over there and swat it out. I like the spike in that situation. And right here, he user rushes me again. Absolute demon coming around the edge. Now, that play, I really had faith that um, they would block him. But my tackle could never block Clown. He went right around him. So I have to tie the game up. Now, this is a situation where I play really passive run defense. And after three jukes, I kind of want the ball to come out. After three jukes, the running back has to be exhausted. Yeah, I play really passive run defense. Almost gets me in trouble here as Walter Payton breaks out, but just don't got have the speed. I have the ability to wrap up the player and, and go ahead and make that play. Once again, here we go. Audible. This is the first drive of the second half. Tie game. Audible and around. Uh, got to make sure my people are lined up. Got to make sure everybody's there. I'm in man coverage. Uh, I'm blitzing everybody. Got to contain on Barr. Barr just did not do a good job containing. Let's him get outside, and he goes up top to Tyree Kill. Now, it's a good job by me. During that play, uh, I realized I wasn't going to make the tag. Make I wasn't going to stop the, and there he goes underneath again. I wasn't going to stop the catch. So I clicked on my DB and moved him in position to make sure I did not give up a touchdown. Here he goes with that flat pass again. Ooh, but I put two flat routes out there to try to stop him. Could have had Keith Bullock coming out with a pick right there. And right here, he caught me audible. And again, there's there's Walter Payton. But I wind up giving a touchdown anyway. But if you see what I did on that deep post, getting back to that, sometimes you're not going to make the play on the ball. You have to recognize that right away and move your DB back to take a better angle to then tackle the wide receiver. But he's killing me with flat passes, killing me with quick passes when he's in running sets. Uh, when people are in running sets, I really don't. I really don't uh, respect the running back or the tight end in man coverage. I pretty much just play man coverage and press him. Here he goes bluffing. a he, th That play was unique because he bluffed the user rush. I didn't roll out. So many people are so used to rolling out right away as Chris Johnson gets loose right there for 12. Rolling out right away. And, and right there I took my time and did not roll out. And this is the play of the game right here. He uses rushes off the other edge. I get away from him. Throw it on the run. To the pie line, Julio Jones. Let's watch that one again. He's going to sneak and rush off the other side. Wish I had identifier. Comes around the edge. You just got to make a miss right here. Boom. Throwing off the back foot. Michael Vick, pie line, toe tap, Julio Jones. Touchdown. 
That's what Michael Vick can do. That's why I'm the best Michael Vick user in the world. And you just got to make a play. That's the one thing, man. Uh, if someone's chasing you, you got to try to make a miss. Not only in open field, but behind in the pocket with Michael Vick. That's what he does. Uh, tie game. So let's play a little bit of defense. We're going to play a little bit safer. We went to a little nickel. Uh, really just try to contain the run and contain the pass all in one. Uh, and right there, he hits a little underneath route there to Greg Olson. But Patrick Peterson wraps him up for a short gain. First and 10, that time I put a flat route out there again. I don't want to get beat by those running back routes again. Put a flat route out there again. That time I send the flat route while it rolls out. Kind of a delayed blitz or a spy. Third and 13, we're going to go ahead and get this inner snow. He's going to throw right through Brian Dawkins' body. First and 10. Once again, we're going to go flat routes. But right there, he does not have an ability on Delaney Walker. Taylor Mays knocks the ball out. Second and 10 again. Flat routes contained. Not going to let him hit this running back flat in the, in, to, for extra yards. Get to a third and 10. He's going to two slants again. I know that. I'm all over it. Drop the interception. Remember the plays that your people go, that your opponent goes to when they need a pass play, when they need a big play in certain formations. When they audible this formation, they like this. When, they, when it's this type of down distance, they like that. Uh, this is how we're going to go in the fourth quarter. Tie game. This is why they watch. Um, and right here, we're going to cut block. We're going to try to get away. Just get out of bounds a little bit. Pick up one yard. I mean, it's crazy and mad now. With Michael Vick, I cannot outrun anybody. I can't outrun 97s, 95s. Any one of these players on the field, I can't outrun them. Uh, we get a cut block right here. And he gets cheated. But no, no. Yeah. If you're running around holding Y, you don't deserve to catch picks. They put that in the game, fixed that about the game a long time ago. He definitely lurked me. But if you're going to run around hold Y, you don't deserve a pick. So I never want to hear that he got cheated right there. Read option, get out of here, boom. We're going to go ahead and slide right there. Tried to wait for a block from Lane Johnson. Now it's the two-minute warning. Now I just need a field goal. Boom, boom. Who risked it right there. He has three timeouts, so he's probably going to get the ball back. Now right here, I come out and field goal. Why? Because my timeouts are important. What's important, I need to know the wind. I need to know how far this new kicker can get. I have the 99 Jan Sterner, Ster, Ster, no, I don't stir, the new guy. I have him. Uh, so I don't know what the wind is. So I use that time in between plays to go out and look at the field goal distance. Do I need five more yards? Do I need one more yard? Can I take a knee? Can I spike the ball? What, a bunch of different things. I need to know exactly what I want. Then I use my timeout. And right there, we get more than enough first down. Slide to stay in bounds. Keep that clock running. So we take it down to one second here. Hand the ball off here to Gary Payton. Or Gary Payton. Walter Payton. Jeez. There it is. Next play, first down. Boom. So now the field goal's in the bag. He cannot get the ball back. We're just going to milk the clock here. First down, we're going to hand it off again. Easy. Boom. Now for me... In this situation, I would like to come out and field goal. Boom. Because he's going to call his timeout instantly. Now, this is going to stop you from being iced. Now, me, as he calls a timeout, now you come out here, take a knee, and milk it all the way down to three seconds. Three seconds is my number. That's what I like to use. That's what I like to use the kick. I feel like the time always goes off with three seconds, and it doesn't necessarily... Um, doesn't necessarily... Uh, need to be anymore and three is safe you're not going to run out of time anything along that nature so we like to kick the field goal for the win now we do have the kickers that can't be iced or anything like that but uh for me if you want to try to avoid the ice if they have one timeout and you're first down you can run the ball make them waste their timeout but the key is if the clock is running even if there's 30 seconds on the clock come out and field goal because if you start that meter there's nothing they can do about that you know, if they can't call their timeout then, and if they call their timeout with 30 seconds left, you still have 30 seconds to run off the clock. So you can run a dive, you can run a, a quarterback sneak, then spike the ball, or use your timeouts if you have them. You know, but you want to get that timeout out of their pocket, even if you can be iced, man. Just practice like if you could <laughs> practice as if you don't have kicker abilities, man. But this was a great game. Uh, I, I love playing a unique offense. I hope you guys enjoyed watching it. If you did, hit that like button, comment. And let me show me some love, man. I've been really grinding out these YouTube videos, and I appreciate all y'all's support.